There will always be people out in the world that will ask, what would happen if I mixed these two things? Conventional wisdom may tell them that those two things don't really fit well together, but every once in a while an idea comes along that meshes two ideas together in such a way that surprises everyone who experiences it. Video games are home for experimentation as more and more genres are beginning to blend in creative ways in order to give the player a unique experience like none other. I can recall the first time I heard about Slay the Spire and was intrigued with the idea of a roguelike deck building game, and I wasn't really sure how those two ideas would come together. However, fast forwarding today and take a quick Google search will show you that there are many games that have been spawned with this genre combination. This brings us to Peglin, a roguelike pachinko game developed by Red Nexus Games. For those who may not know, pachinko is a very popular game in Japan, however its appeal over in the states has really mostly been reduced down to people playing the popular Peggle game on mobile devices or on Facebook. Outside of Peggle, the closest you'll probably get to a pachinko game in American culture is the pinball machine. So imagine if I told you that that style of game was being mixed with a roguelike game. Would your first reaction be to laugh about it? Because mine definitely was. Upon playing this game, I was surprised at how quickly I got used to the idea of these two genres being combined. Plainly put, the balls that you drop collect points that are then transferred into damage that attacks the closest enemy on the ground. There are different types of balls that you can use with varying different effects, and you're giving a deck of sorts that shows you what's coming up, kind of like Tetris does when it shows you upcoming Tetris pieces. After you let loose your shot and hopefully deal some damage, the enemy takes its turn by either moving closer to you or attacking you. Then you repeat this process, but if you ever run out of ammo, you must reload, which gives the enemy a free turn to act. I found that to be a very interesting aspect as it made sure that I hurriedly bought some space before I took a hit that I knew I couldn't return in kind. Now I mentioned that you attack the closest enemy on the ground because this game actually has a variety of creatures including flying ones. Unless you have a ball that allows you to specifically target them, you must aim for the bombs on the map. Apart from one type of ball, it takes two hits to hit make the bomb go off, but when it activates, it hits all enemies in the field of battle, which can be a tremendous help. However, the bombs do not respawn when you hit the special respawn location. Speaking of, there are two locations that will always be available to hit. The respawn location allows you to refresh the map so you never run out of targets to hit. And the critical hit turns everything red and builds up massive amounts of damage to deal a devastating blow to your enemy. Combat seems to be relatively straightforward, but I really enjoy playing it, and before I knew it, I had spent almost an hour playing the demo. Moving from location to location is also notable, as you don't really get to choose where you go. If you had managed the map properly, you can get a clear shot at the direction you want to go on the map. Otherwise, you leave it up to chance whether you go the way you want to go, the other direction, or even just take damage if you're unlucky enough to sink a shot in the middle. There is a surprising amount of variance for Peglin. This game offers up different ball types, but also relics that can do anything from protecting you when you reload to giving you more special spaces to hit on the board. On top of the random encounters and the different map boards you encounter, the game stays fresh. Although, I did find that certain maps were harder than others, and to be honest, this could be due to my lack of skill in the pachinko department, but I felt like I was forced to restart a run because the first map that I had was not so friendly for the first encounter. Overall, I can say that this game is something that really stands out to me as it's both entertaining and vastly different from what I would expect from any developer. I didn't really go over the art, but I really enjoy the aesthetic of the game, and at the end screen for the demo, it teases that much like Slay the Spires, Banners of Ruin, and so many other roguelikes out there, this area in the demo is only the first of three in the campaign that will be coming to you sometime soon as it's listed for a release in quarter one of 2022. With that, this video is over, so I hope you enjoyed this look into a very different style of game. Have a great rest of your day, and as always, be kind to one another.